August 6, 1945, a single atomic bomb drops on Hiroshima, Japan, changing the world forever. But did you know that the hardest part of making that bomb wasn't the science behind it, but the engineering feat of separating two nearly identical atoms? Let's dive into why separating uranium isotopes is one of the toughest challenges in nuclear engineering. Uranium, a silvery metal with the power to unleash an energy equal to thousands of tons of TNT. Yet despite its incredible power, what really makes uranium special is its isotopes. Naturally occurring uranium consists mainly of two isotopes, uranium-238 and uranium-235. The key difference between them? Their mass. Uranium-238 makes up over 99% of natural uranium, while the much rarer uranium-235 is what makes a nuclear bomb possible. To create a bomb, you need to separate out the U-235. But here's the catch. They are almost identical. But why is it so hard to separate them? Well, when we separate items, we rely on differences, like how we use magnets to pull out iron or heat to boil off water. For uranium, it's not that simple. Both isotopes have nearly identical physical, magnetic, and chemical properties. So no magnets, no solvents, and no easy tricks. Engineers had to get creative. The first method? Gaseous diffusion. They turned uranium into a gas called uranium hexafluoride and pushed it through tiny perforations. Because U-235 is lighter, it moves slightly faster and is a tiny bit more likely to pass through. But the difference is minuscule, so slight that engineers had to build a massive facility covering over 40 acres just to make it work. The Manhattan Project's diffusion plant was a labyrinth of 100 miles of piping, linking together 4,000 stages of separation. Each stage enriched the uranium just a little bit more, from 3% to the 90% needed for a bomb. That's a monumental effort just to exploit a tiny, tiny difference. Later, a new technique emerged, centrifuges. Picture a cylinder spinning at thousands of revolutions per second. This spinning forces the heavier U-238 to the outer edges, while the lighter U-235 concentrates closer to the center. This difference helps engineers scoop out more of the desired isotope. But even this wasn't easy. The rotors had to spin vertically incredibly fast, and any slight imbalance would cause them to shatter. Designing rotors that could handle these speeds without falling apart was a marvel of precision engineering. Every tiny detail matters, from the thickness of the rotor walls to the balance of the entire machine. A single rotor spinning at 1,000 revolutions per second exerts forces 10 times its own weight. Engineers had to develop new materials, magnetic bearings, and cooling systems just to make this possible. So, why isn't the world filled with nuclear weapons? Because this engineering is incredibly difficult. The facilities are huge, expensive, and require vast amounts of energy. During the Manhattan Project, some wondered if it took more energy to enrich uranium than what they could get out of it. Today, there are even newer methods, like lasers that exploit tiny differences in how U-235 and U-238 absorb light. But even these advanced techniques have their own challenges, and the complexity of building and maintaining these systems is why the International Atomic Energy Agency can track attempts to create them. In the end, separating uranium isotopes is the engineering bottleneck that prevents nuclear proliferation. It's the hardest, most complicated step in building a nuclear bomb, and perhaps the one thing keeping our world a little safer. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more fascinating science stories. See you next time.